pourquoi travaille-t-on ben, euh, Si vous interrogez euh, 9 dixièmes des gens, ils vous diront « pour gagner ma vie ». Foucault dit la domination, c'est faire faire quelque chose à quelqu'un d'autre. Une des formes déplaisantes que, connaissent bien, euh, que connaissaient bien les ouvriers du 19e siècle et de l'industrie finissante, c'était la figure du contremaître, foreman en, en anglais. C'est la personne qui, assisté du chronométreur qui vous compte et du régleur qui règle les machines, est le maître du temps. Et vous vous souvenez que Charlot, dans les temps modernes, Qu'est-ce qui le broie dans tous les sens C'est une machine qui compte l'heure, qui compte les minutes, tac, 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 tac. All the people who talked about how important clocks were, watches were, for the development of industrial capitalism, and all those stories about how peasants had, be, had to be taught when they went into factories to keep time, and that watches were a disciplining mechanism. Because there was to teach and discipline the workers for a certain type of work. Y ahí, claro, la gente antes en el campo pues era muy libre de trabajar, combinaba los distintos trabajos, dependía del de clima, de la naturaleza. Y cuando pasas a la fábrica, pues da lo mismo que sea verano o invierno, que sea día o de noche. Ahí puedes trabajar 14 horas frente a la máquina, ¿no? Entonces había que disciplinar a los trabajadores. Y aquí jugó un papel muy importante la iglesia, la educación. Si a los niños en los colegios, pues todavía... Hasta hace poco, y a lo mejor muchos siguen con que se ponen en fila, que hay unos horarios, que hay un pito, que hay una campana, etc. Es decir, desde la escuela ya se disciplinaba la mano de obra. ¿no? Y después esto pues, ha, con, ha continuado, ¿no? naturalmente, con ahora pues, bueno, una diversidad de trabajos, pero los horarios, los, los, los resultados, etc. Y en tiempo, bueno, en mi definición de tiempo, is that it's the coordinate that lets us most simply understand the evolution of the universe. But that is a circular definition. The old proletariat was exploited on the job in working time and had an industrial time regime. Got up in the morning, went to the factory, went home, if I still had energy, had some sex, went to bed. Je sais pas, moi, moi, moi Bazin, il ne me viendrait jamais à l'idée de, de travailler dans une usine. Parce que j'estime que dans une usine, vous êtes là, vous êtes enfermé, vous êtes là toute la journée, mais avec avez... ce, ce bruit de moteur et tout mais ça. Vous avez vachement raison. C'est dégueulasse. Je me demande comment on peut faire pour arriver à rester dans une usine. Comme vous dites, enfermé. On est contrôlé. Il y a cette espèce de division qui se crée déjà entre ouvriers. En plus de ça, il y a la maîtrise qui nous harcèle qui est toujours derrière nous, les contre-maîtres. C'est ça. C'est vraiment dégueulasse. Went to school, went to labor market for 30 years, two years of retirement, drop dead. Et les situationnistes vous disent gagner sa vie à la perdre. In the United States in the mid 19th century when the industrial revolution was beginning, uh, working people uh, 
described wage labor as equivalent to slavery. The only difference was that wage, the wage labor is supposed to be temporary, where slavery is permanent. Actually, that was such a widespread idea that it was a slogan of the Republican Party. Uh, Abraham Lincoln accepted it. That was one of their slogans. They want to eliminate chattel slavery, you know, literal slavery, and wage, what they called wage slavery. No influence of Marx or, or European radicalism. This just came straight out of uh, popular understanding. Ils refusaient le salarié agricole comme les esclaves noirs ont refusé les contremaîtres dans les champs de coton. Et c'est pour ça que le modèle de l'exploitation familiale en France a beaucoup mieux marché qu'une euh, idée de soft cause ou de grande entreprise agricole. Money wages. We know that wages are falling. We know that they're more volatile. So people in the precariat are always living on the edge of unsustainable debt. One mistake, one accident, you're finished, you're out. That's how fragile we have created our society. So time is lived at the intersection of an array of social differences in which some people's time is much more valued than other people's time. And in fact, some people gain speed at the expense of other people having to wait and be slow. Qu'est-ce qui ne va pas dans cette chose-là bah, C'est évidemment la relation de domination. Et euh, même si les gens doivent manger pour vivre, hein, commandement de la Genèse, enfin interprétation de la Bible, euh, reprise par Lénine hein, dans le régime euh, communiste ou socialiste, qui ne travaille pas, ne mange pas. And I think that there's a kind of sense of frustration, a tremendous sense of frustration. Uh, and you see this in a younger generation that looks at the future and says, where are the meaningful jobs? Uh, it's not only jobs. I mean, I get very tired when politicians go around and say, jobs, 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 jobs. You say, but yeah, but meaningful jobs. In all the books of economy, in almost all the manuals, not the books, the manuals appear in the first pages where it says, objectives of macroeconomy. Cuatro o cinco, uno de los cuales es pleno empleo. Y esto es mentira. Keynes y Caleque ya dijeron, no hay ningún gobierno de un país capitalista que le interese el pleno empleo, porque los trabajadores tienen mucho poder de negociación. Por tanto, a las sociedades interesa trabajar con un cierto nivel de paro. ¿no? Y por tanto, lo otro no es verdad. ¿no? Pero, bueno, queda bien decir que vamos hacia el pleno empleo y que conseguiremos el pleno empleo. ¿no? The biggest employers now are no longer of that sort. They're Walmart, McDonald's, uh, you know, and, and the rest of it. And you talk to people who are employed in that and say, do you feel this is dignified work? And they'll look at you and laugh. Bueno, hay que decir que incluso también pues, los, los ladrones y que es de por el estilo puede hacer exactamente lo mismo, es decir, puede hablar de su trabajo. ¿no? Es curioso como también en estos sectores se revela que la palabra del trabajo constituye algo así como una adoración. Si a algo de uno se le llama trabajo, está en cierto modo santificado. Tiene que enfrentarse a los gritos e insultos de los afectados por las preferentes.
and about 70% of the population of the United States is either totally uh, upset at the nature of the work it has to do or totally indifferent to it. Mm. And um, even just yesterday at Davos, I heard that maybe 65% or 75% of the kinds of jobs may disappear. Is that really a um, So I've heard those figures. A possibility? And, uh, last night, uh, I attended a dinner with uh, several senior economists, Nobel Prize winners. Mm -hmm. uh, the dinner was supposed to be about the new internet economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the economists really only wanted to talk about the impact of, of robotics and AI on jobs in the next few decades. Mm -hmm. I, I see two sides of the issue. One is that the notion that normal work means standing in front of a machine and doing the same thing 18,000 times a day, every day of your life. Uh, that's a fairly new notion. Um, that's really the last 150 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, 500 years ago, someone writing science fiction, this might have been their version of catastrophe, of dy their dystopian future. And uh, now we're, we're worried that it's going to go away. Do we need to continue with uh, a system where most people in the world are treated as machines? And I think the answer is no. Dejar el trabajo en el sentido capitalista, ¿no? Dejar el uh, trabajo como un trabajo anajenado, como un trabajo abstracto, como un trabajo que... que, que que no realmente es una actividad sin sentido ¿no? para, para la gran mayoría de la gente. Qu'on soit exploité, on peut l'être, mais qu'on soit dominé, c'est insupportable. Et on va fuir la domination, par exemple, du petit patron, du contremaître, du petit chef. On va la fuir, pour quoi faire Pour se réfugier, par exemple, dans des statuts où on a la sensation de revenir à son compte. Au moins, on ne dépend pas. On dépend de soi. Même si cette dépendance de soi, si vous voulez, camoufle quelquefois un taux d'exploitation plus fort. All your aspects of work and labor are blurring together. You are exploited off the workplace, outside working time, as much as on it. And you are living in a tertiary time regime. And this leads to the concept that I've developed in the books, which is about the precariatized mind. The precariatized mind is you don't know what is the best thing to be doing with your time. Because you're not sure what are the returns to doing this. Do I do a little more retraining? Do I do a little more networking? Do I do a little more extra work? Do I do a little more this? Do I do a little more that? You don't know. So people in the precariat are feeling the stress of not having control of their time. It's predicted that within the next 10 years, in all rich in industrialized countries, more than one in every three labor transactions will be done online through cloud labor relations. It's hugely growing. This is not employment, and it's not self-employment. It's people doing tasks. And it's part of the globalizing labor market that you're seeing people in Boston, in Madrid, in Manchester, competing with people in Goa, in Accra, in Manila, for the same jobs, the same tasks. Well, this is accelerating the downward pressure on wages and returns to doing tasks. That's a tremendous revolution that's taking place. And for the first time in history, we have a situation where already millions of people are exporting their labor without exporting themselves, without migrating. That's, that's a fundamental change. And we haven't begun to understand how we respond to that process. This sense of alienation is producing, at this point, not an alternative political movement, but outbreaks of 
fury and anger, uh, which are actually very, very difficult to predict and very, very difficult to control. Es básicamente un grito de decir, no, 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 no podemos aceptar lo que está pasando, no, no podemos seguir haciendo las, las cosas así, tenemos que hacer las cosas de otra forma. La pregunta es, ¿qué do we replace it with? How do we engineer a transition to a society where people are actually doing things that people enjoy doing and are beneficial to others? The way in which we relate to each other the way in which we relate to our jobs, the way in which we relate to the natural world around us, uh, is being constructed in a certain way through the dynamics of technological change and through the growth process, to the point where it's almost impossible to be really human mm. in, in, in our relationships uh, to people, in our relationships to, to life. Uh, I read to my children most nights. I enjoy doing that, they enjoy it, but it's not an economic exchange. Mm -hmm. Uh, so people can provide value to each other, and the question is how do we make an economy out of that? How do people uh, gain wealth and self-respect and, and a feeling of a position in society when the traditional notion of a job uh, may be vanishing? Y desarrollar un, un hacer, un, un, una actividad que no es trabajo. No, no, no es trabajo en el mismo sentido, ¿no? una actividad creativa, una actividad que va creando otras relaciones sociales y otras relaciones con, con la naturaleza. And there are a lot of experiments going on right now of trying to say, all right, look, uh, the social relations are, are terrible, let's try and set up a solidarity economy, let's try to set up uh, uh, worker cooperatives, let's... Uh, do what the Argentinians are do, which is create uh, recuperated factories, take over the factories for ourselves, do those kinds of things. In a, in a world where there's mass alienation from our relation to nature and relation to others, we're going to see responses which are not only outbreaks of fury and anger at the nature of the system, but also start to become, well, maybe locally you and I could sit down and start to construct something which is an alternative. So we're seeing a lot of that going on at various parts of the world. I think that that's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening to the people in the Greek 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 Y ahí las comunidades indígenas, um, sobre todo en los movimientos indígenas, ¿no? como ofrecen ilustraciones que, que sí, que son muy importantes, obviamente para ellos mismos, pero también para, para todos. Uh, there's a good deal of, uh, I think, uh, interest in, in uh, uh, what might be called autonomous forms of organizing. So, uh, there's a great deal of suspicion of political parties. There's a great deal of suspicion about uh, any appeal to state power or and the like. But there are these uh, sort of movements, uh, I think, which uh, I, I think it's wrong to call them anarchists because they're not. I mean, some of it is, but, but it's, it's more about uh, trying to create uh, more sort of local democracy, local democratic uh, decision-making structures and I think this is a very very healthy uh, phase of innovation at that level. The big big problem for me is how do we actually turn it into something which is much uh, greater. I should say that below the precariat is a lumpen precariat, an underclass. People out in the streets holding their hand out hoping that we will give them a few something. Every city today has a big lumpen precariat. It is a shame on all of us that that is the reality in the 21st century. Disgrace. Thank you very much for listening. Anyway, thank you.
Bon, écoutez, vous faites ce que vous voulez. Hein.